Paul received his BS and MBA from Wayne State University, PhD from Walden University, and pre-medical curriculum from Fordham University. He is currently at Harvard University for an ALM in biology. His research includes using chaos theory to model financial markets and economic emergence. His work on economic emergence contains new theoretical concepts of economic evolution and the creation of self-organized structures. In addition, Dr. Paul Cottrell has published works from his Harvard University studies in genomics, neurobiology, neurosurgery, endocrinology, and microbiota. My curriculum at, at Harvard dealt with genomics and dealt with cancer biology. So a lot of research in cancer biology deals with infecting tissues, infecting cells. Uh, certain cancers are caused by viruses, not many, but you know a few. But um, virology is part of that curriculum. So we had to learn how to use the NIH databases to do this type, type of research. So what I did was I looked at the, the sequence that the researchers in China provided, the NIH, that's posted on Wikipedia. And anyone could click that link and go to the actual database and look at the actual genomic sequence. So with my knowledge in genomics, what I did was I did what is called a BLAST search, and I compared that sequence to other organisms to see what type of homology what type of seed, this, this RNA is an RNA virus. So what type of organisms have a high similarity uh, sequence? So when I did that, about 20 or so organisms popped up and they all were bat SARS. So basically through this, and I, I, did, a, I did a video that people can, can watch, but, and I show exactly how to do the BLAST search on this website. It shows, and I might be able to show, share some, some pictures, you can try, but, but basically what it shows is that the Wuhan virus or this novel coronavirus, which is a family of viruses, has very high homology to the bat SARS virus. And I have a theory that this potential strain of coronavirus is a mixture of about four of the bat SARS viruses where it makes it more virulent, where, it, where they're in the genome. It's about a 30,000 base pair genome. And the first half of the genome deals with replication, which is called replicase. It codes for a protein that replicates the RNA and helps to produce some of the protein, the early proteins it needs. And near the end of the genome, is called the S protein. And that is the surface coating that hooks onto tissue uh, when it's infecting a host. So when someone breathes in that virus, that S protein is hooking onto a receptor that's in the lung and it allows that virus to get into the cell and start to replicate. I also did a video on the, the, the probability of this happening through just natu a, a natural selection in a natural environment. And it's a low probability for these big chunks to just randomly appear in the front of the genome and in the back of the genome on areas that make this virus really susceptible to increased infection. You know, it's focusing on the replication side and it's focusing on the attachment to cellular receptors in our, in our body. So it seems to me that this virus, it evolved and it, it was taken from bat SARS, which uh, it, I can actually give you the number. I, I think it's, I think the, the virus that it evolved from was a KF2944571. This is the name of that actual genomic code. And that evolved, maybe naturally, maybe not. And that evolved into a strand that was very similar to an MG strand. So when someone does this blast list, they can see the, the two MG strands, which are a more virulent uh, bat SARS. And it, to me, it seems as though it, it was possible that individuals or an individual took 
big chunks of virulent sections of previous bat SARS viruses and put it into this Wuhan strain. And when you, you know, do the probability is of this just naturally happening and being by a weapons lab 20 miles away, it's a very low probability, very, very low probability. So it's kind of, it, it kind of lends itself to, you know, thinking, well, you know what, this might, this might be a leak from a, a weapons lab or a research lab. I'm not saying that that means that it was done nefariously, but this is a potential problem. And this, as it spreads and people get sicker, other components of society will start to break down. Uh, the economics, the infrastructure, we're already seeing the, the, the financial markets showing some problems, especially in travel, in the oil market. The S&P 500 you know, went down today. The luxury brands have been selling off. We're also hearing that supplies, medical supplies are starting to run out. If you're treating just one patient and you have a whole staff of, let's say, 15 doctors and nurses that are treating this one patient, every time that they go in and out of that room, they have to declothe. That material needs to be incinerated. They can't be reused. So they're going to run out of masks. They're going to be running out of gowns. They're going to be running out of goggles and stuff like this. And a lot of the manufacturing of these products are made in China. So, so if there is a worldwide contagion that takes place, we will not have the means to be able to curtail it. If it is what I think it is, which is bioengineered, then probably will have a much larger effect rate Individuals are going to be have this this uh, deep pneumonia type infection, and individuals that are immune compromised most likely will not survive it. So I'm not saying that there's going to be millions of people dying from this, but it's very possible to see many hundreds of thousands. The um, incubation period that they're stating in the news right now, between one day to 14 days before you even show signs. That means to uh, be really prepared, like what Diamond's saying, you have to, at a very minimum, need two weeks worth of, of supplies for food, toiletries, and stuff. But if you have it, if you, during this incubation period, and then you, you actually catch the virus, and it, you know, takes you, you know, to sometimes people have a flu for a week or two or three weeks, right? You need like five weeks worth of supplies. Most people do not have that in their pantry. If there is a lockdown or individuals want to, you know, just, you know, stay at home during the, the, you know, these incubation periods, they can't go out. They, you know, there's not going to be enough masks and all that. They, so you're going to, you're going to need supplies. So you have to you have to have at least, you know about five weeks worth of, of provisions. If there is an outbreak in let's say a city like New York. You're talking about not just a lockdown for 14 days. You're talking about this virus moving around in a in a closed environment that could stretch out for six months before it burns itself out. Just think about what happens at work for a normal flu season. There's usually about two months where the flu is just slowly moving around the organization, depending on the size of the organization you work for, right? This is much worse. Here's something that you do not hear reported in the American media. And this isn't in the Russian media either. This is in uh, actually the media in Ukraine. This is a very shocking update on some uh, very surprising allegations about the coronavirus. Buried hazardous containers found buried in the evacuated consulate in Wuhan, China, needs explanation. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China formally requested the United States to explain the biohazard containers that were found buried in the evacuated consulate general in Wuhan. The PRC security forces cordoned off other U.S. diplomatic missions in the country. An official statement by the foreign ministry said the containers were found on January 30th 
After the U.S. consulate general in Wuhan in full force was evacuated on a special board of the U.S. Air Force in connection with the outbreak of the new virus. The search was carried out after Chinese intelligence passed on some undeniable materials, uh, the contents of which have yet to be disclosed. Since attempts to get comments on official and closed channels from the few days did not lead to clear answers, we decided to move this question to a different level and demand the answers in public. China is also initiating a meeting of the UN Security Council, said Foreign Ministry spokesman Hua Chanyuing. The department said the total of eight containers of biohazard were found. Hinhao News Agency also published their photo in a military warehouse near the consulate. The boxes were wrapped in two layers of tarpaulin and buried in, a back, in the backyard of the consulate general at the depth of one and a half meters. Now, one and a half meters, for you that don't know, is about five feet. The contents are now being studied by the Chinese military biologists. Chinese scientists have found the genome of coronavirus with an autograph, or the signature, of the American biolaboratory Raven Lab. Scientists from PRC decrypted the 2019 NCOV coronavirus genome and found it in a signature of the American Biology Laboratory Raven Lab. Specialists talked about their discovery at a press conference in Beijing. A characteristic imprint was found in the structure of single-strand RNA. After deciphering one of the sections, the scientists transferred the data to a spectrogram where the letters RVNLB were clearly visible. According to experts, the likelihood that they appeared spontaneously tends to zero. Random mutations can explain the appearance of this inscription only theoretically. In practice, the well-known Raven, Laboratories, Raven Lab Laboratories uses similar coding methods to mark its engineering projects. We have already seen something similar before, and now we are fully confident this is the same label, said Kim Shishon. Uh, head of the Shejuan Biology Laboratory. The specialist added that the tag was placed on a site that is usually not readable other than with the use of advanced American technology. However, the developers did not take into the account that by the beginning of 2020, China had a new RNA scanner called Red Dawn, which is not inferior to American counterparts in scanner quality. Information about the find was transferred to the authorities of the PRC. Chinese diplomats have already said they intend to raise the issue with the UN Security Council. Further study of the virus is ongoing. So basically what this is implying is that the, the new coronavirus was probably let loose by the American government. And they took the containers and buried them at the uh, embassy or whatever that happens to be there. So a lot of the people are going to say, do I think it's true? I know you may or may not think it's true. But do I think it's true? Um, you know, I don't know. At this point, I don't really put anything past the American government.